how amazingly he is identified with us. Now he's going to start talking about Melchizedek, but he has to take a little detour. Hebrews 5, 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is talking about Gethsemane and the cross. If you read Psalm 22, which is a picture of Christ on the cross, one of the things he prayed was, You will not suffer your Holy One to see corruption. He was heard and that he feared. On the one hand, he became sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21, and condemned sin in the flesh, Romans 8.3, was a sacrifice for sin and judged for it. On the other hand, while that was going on, he was praying and was heard because of his righteousness and he was raised from the dead. Think about him praying with supplications, strong crying, and tears. This is our Jesus. This is what he went through for you. He loved you and endured that, and it put him in a situation where he had nothing to offer but supplications with prayers and crying and tears. We cannot imagine the agony he went through. Though he was a son, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. This is something he had to learn. He was so conformed to the image of God to the Father's nature as the Son of God, that everything he did was perfect. But then he became a man and had to learn what it's like to obey in the face of all the weakness of the flesh and temptations all around. This is something he learned not through failure, but by victory. It's hard for us to understand and see that God learned something. But because the children were partakers of flesh and blood, he put part in the same to deliver us. And in that matter, he identified with us. That is why he's not ashamed to call us brothers, because he has been surrounded by weaknesses and learned obedience through the things he suffered. He was perfected through these sufferings. For that reason, he became the author of eternal salvation to those who obey him. This is what he's talking about when he says he was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, having been tempted as we are in all points but without sin. This is his learning of obedience through what he suffered. He knows what it's like. His whole being was trained to sympathize, feel, recognize, and respond to us. It's like he cut a path in himself for the divine life to flow in need. Before he was incarnated, he did not have need. Life just flowed, but it was not in a response to need in himself. Now he is joined to us and understands. His own being has gone through all of this. His life responded to every kind of temptation and provided the victory. That life has been trained to respond to need, and it overcame everything in Jesus' life. He had the victory at all times because the life which flowed through his humanity. That was the perfecting so that this life now flows when we are tempted. This is the law of the spirit of life. This is a spontaneous response from his being. Only in Hebrews can we see this. This is not the shadow, but the reality. We think of the high priesthood in the Old Testament in the shadow, the tabernacle with the ordinances and procedures, and all of these things they did intentionally, according to a set of carnal rules that were outward. But this is his life. This is someone who was appointed and then perfected through everything he went through in his humanity. So now this life just responds this way automatically. It's just a law. It's the principle of his life operating as the high priest to supply us in our time of need. These are very difficult things to speak of. Even the writer of Hebrews said this, concerning whom we have much to say and things which are hard to utter. We can understand mechanical things and carnal things, but life is mysterious. We don't understand created life. How much more do we not understand the eternal, uncreated, incorruptible life of God himself? But this is Christ who is the author of an eternal salvation. It is eternal because it is of his life and springs out of the gushing torrent of his incorruptible life. Look at what backs up this eternal salvation. Our high priest, who was taken from among men, separated from them, passed through the heavens, and was appointed by God to be our representative, backs this up. And he lives continually, he ever lives, to make intercession for us. His life is for us. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 6.13, Now the body is not for fornication, but the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 
I always wondered what it meant that the Lord is for the body. But I think that we're seeing at least a glimpse of how Christ has been given to us in such a way that there is a law that ties us together, the law of the spirit of life. Because he dwells in us, lives for us, and is for the body, when we have need, it triggers his intercession so that he gives life to our mortal body through his spirit that dwells in us. Romans 8.11 